Today I'm going to be making the Sunshine Crossbody Pouch by Bagstock Designs. This is a free pattern and I'll put a link to the website below so you can head over there and try it out for yourself. So let's make it. I have all of my pieces cut out here ready to go and you want to print your pattern at 100% or actual size and test it against the test square that's included in the pattern. I have my lining pieces, all of my zippers laid out here. This is the lining pieces for the pocket, front panel, back panel, side panels for front and back. I've already made my strap, my D-ring connectors, my zipper tab, my metal tag for the front. Not necessary, but since I sew my bags, that's what I use. My D-rings that are for my tabs to connect my strap to, rivets, not necessary, but I'm going to use them, and a rivet setter or rivet press. I'm going to be using the rivet setter today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be starting with the front center panel of the bag and that consists of these four things. This is the pocket lining, the bottom and the top pieces and my zipper and I've already marked the center of all of these pieces and to do that with a zipper I just fold and crimp. I never cut my zippers. I just pinch the sides like this and that's ready to go. So I want my zipper opening on the left so I'm going to take it flip it over and start pinning my pieces together. And what I like to do, because I'm too lazy to baste, I don't think it's always necessary. Sometimes it is. Sometimes I find it does make things easier. I'm gonna line up the center piece there. Right sides together. Like this. And pop a clip in it. Keeping that zipper tape lined up with the edge of the fabric. Just going to line all these pieces up, clip it, and then we're going to take it straight over to the machine to sew. All right, we'll see you at the machine. Okay, so we have our piece pinned all the way across the top. Now flip this up and show you that I've moved my zipper pull back out of the way because I'm going to be starting at this end. And I'm using a seam guide. You don't have to. I just find it's easier to keep everything nice and straight. And this is set at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I have changed out my foot to a zipper foot. I drop my needle. I'm going to go ahead and stitch. I'm going to make sure my needle's down. Reach under here and push that zipper pull to the other end, not all the way because, well, we don't want to completely take it off. If you're using a regular zipper tape with a stop, it's not as much of an issue as using um, a zipper tape like this. But you can always put it back on. So I'm going to clip my threads. And you can stop here and take it to the ironing board and iron it. I find that when that it's not always necessary, I just pr finger press it out of the way. Just give it a nice finger press. And then we're going to flip all of this back this way. It's another thing that I like about uh, Decoville Light, which is what I've used on the center panels is it's just firm enough that it'll hold its shape when you finger press it and everything's going to stay right where I want it. So I'm going to move my seam guide out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and increase my stitch length. And we're going to top stitch. So I'm going to take this back over to the table and we're going to get the top piece attached. Let's first take a lint roller because black picks everything up. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to bring that notch that I've created right in the middle there up to the center point which I can still just see and line that up and then I'm going to take my top front panel and line that up as well and give it a clip 
and then I can flip things back over and clip from the other side. Making sure that everything is lined up nicely. We're just going to kind of mash that flat because we folded that up. I'm going to take this over to the machine and sew. Okay, so we have our piece all set up and ready to sew. I've already moved the zipper back to the left side so it'll be out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and re-line my seam guide at 3 8 of an inch. Again, it's not necessary. I just like doing it. Take our stitch length back down. Something I usually forget. It's one of my worst sewing habits. It's forgetting to reset that seam, my seam allowance. Put the needle down. Hey, come here. Come to me. <laughs> it's not cooperating. There we go. We'll move that out of the way. Make sure everything's still lined up nicely and go ahead and stitch. Okay, so this part is a little bit different since we're not going to be folding up the pocket lining. We're just going to be adjusting this part. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold it down with my fingers. That way my seam allowance stays where it's at. And I'm going to push this up and crease it with my fingers. That way when I top stitch that seam allowance is going to be secured to the front panel. Move this out of the way real quick. And we're going to top stitch. That is our front pocket panel completed. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch down both sides just to secure the pocket so that it doesn't shift around when we're working on the rest of the bag. I'm just going to do this right on the edge of the fabric. I'm not worried about going over my zipper. I could if I wanted you know, to worry about staying closed or anything but it's not really concerning because I'm about to sew the other panels on. Okay so next we're going to go ahead back over to the counter and we're going to get ready to attach our side panels to both the front and the back center panels. So I'll see you over there. Okay, so we have our front panel, our back panel, and our side panels for both the front and the back. I'm going to set those aside for just a second, and I'm going to trim down the sides here on the front panel. Right. So I've just trimmed down the side panels on the front piece. Now we're going to get ready to attach our side panels to the front and back panels. So we have these pieces. And one thing that the pattern stresses, and I typically like to pay attention when the pattern has something in bold. So it specifically says when lining up the side panels, to line it up from the center of the side, not from the top or the bottom edge. There might be a little bit to trim at the end, but it's not going to be that big a deal. So what I'm going to do is find the centers of my side panels and my center panel, line those up, and go from there. I'm just matching these up corner to corner, just using my pen to make a little mark. 
I'm going to do the same thing with this. Make a little mark. Like so. I'm going to do that with the rear panel pieces and we'll come back then. Okay, so I have the center marked on the sides of all the pieces here. So now we're going to match them up and clip them. And I'm just going to put one clip in the center. So I can kind of see my little red mark on this side. And on this side, I'm going to put my fingernail right there and kind of line it up that way. And I'm just going to put a clip right there. And I tend to sew things like this sort of assembly line fashion. I think it goes quicker that way. So there's the front panel piece. Let's go ahead and line up the back panel pieces. I can kind of see the crease that I made right there, so it's not too big a stretch to get that lined up. All right, I'll see you back over the machine. Okay, so we have our front and back panels clipped together. I'm going to start with the front panel. I've already switched out my presser foot. I'm going to go ahead and get my seam guide back down here. Again, a seam guide isn't necessary. It does allow you to work a little bit faster though. So I'm going to move my zipper over to the center just so it's out of the way. Make sure that my sides are even. Take my stitch length back down, and here we go. So now I'm going to take my back panel, move that out of the way just a little. And keep on going. I know that was kind of a long back stitch, but I forgot to hit it. It'll be okay. So I've got that out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and clip these threads because they will annoy me. Make sure my side's lined up, and off we go. So I'm going to flip the front panel around. Get that side lined up at the edge. Okay, so my bobbin ran out. I've redone that. So I'm going to start back where at the beginning of this one. Back stitch again. And so right over the stitches that are already there. Again, making sure that while I do this, my side is nice and lined up. Okay, so I do the same thing as I did with the front panel with my side panels. Is I'm just going to press it open with my finger. I'm going to line the right side of my presser foot up with the edge of this and I'm going to make sure that I'm keeping this pulled back as I'm top stitching. I'm going to increase my stitch length, drop my needle. I 
Okay, so our front and back panels are complete. I'm just going to take these over to the table, trim the edges, and then we'll start getting ready to assemble the rest of the bag. Okay, so I've trimmed down the top and the bottom of my front and back panels, and I've added my metal label to the front panel of this one. So I'm going to move this out of the way. These are ready to be attached to the rest of the bag. We're going to move on to our lining pocket. So I've gone ahead and marked the center on the front and the back of this one, and I'll show you why in just a second. So I'm measuring two inches down on center, and I've drawn two lines a half an inch apart. This is, in the pattern states, a rectangle that is seven inches wide by three eighths inch tall. I typically do mine at a half an inch, so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do here. So now that that is done, I'm going to flip this over and one inch down on center. I'm going to take my pocket lining, which I've already marked, and center that. I'm going to put a couple of pins in this. And then I'm going to meet you over at the sewing machine to attach it. Okay, now we're ready to attach this part of our lining pocket to our lining piece. So I'm going to flip this over where you can see my lines here, and I've already adjusted my stitch lengths. I'm going to move these threads out of the way. They're kind of short. And I'm going to be very careful as I'm sewing this to make sure that my needle Move the light down so you can see a little bit better. My needle is dropping down right on the point of that line. I'm sewing right on that line from one end to the other. And I'm going to spin it around and just move it over to the other side and do the same thing, making sure that my needle is going down right at the end of that line. So when you're using a domestic to do this, you may want to be careful when you're back stitching there because often the back stitch length is not the same as your normal stitch length. it tends to be a little bit shorter than your forward stitch length. Whereas with a Juki or an industrial like this, it's the same, both forward and back. So now I'm gonna clip that. And I think I can pretty much finish the rest of this pocket while we're over here. So we're just gonna stay here at the machine. I can pull these pins out now and I'll show you how I set this up. Okay, so I have a small craft mat here, and I'm gonna mark a point here in the center on both ends. So I wanna cut from that point to each corner, going all the way as close as I can get to the threads without cutting them, and then from this point all the way across to this point. And I'll show you what I use for cutting these lines here. This is a tool that came with my Cricut. It's just like an, a flat ended X-Acto blade. And this is really great for cutting these. So I'm actually gonna lay it on its side and push it right up to those threads, but not go through, stand it up, and go all the way to that point that I drew. 
I'm going to do the same thing on all four corners. Okay, now that those corners are done, I'm just going to take my fabric scissors. You can use your rotary tool if you'd like. Just cut right up the center. There that wasn't open. All right. So now that that's set, we're going to take this and turn it through so that it's on the other side. And then once I do that, I'm going to take it over to the ironing board, press it, and then I'll be right back. Okay. Now we've got that opening ironed nice and flat. All of our edges are pretty straight and all of the fabric is nice and smooth. So I'm going to take some double-sided adhesive, and this is 3M brand, if you're wondering, and I'm going to go down both sides of this pocket, and that's just going to make it easier to attach the zipper. Okay, so now I'm going to peel off one side, of the backing. We'll start with the bottom. Now I want my zipper to open on the left, so that's going to be this side, or open from the left. So I'm not concerned at the moment that my pull is all the way down here. I'm just going to line this up as centered as I can get it. Kind of feel my way. and press that bottom in place. Now I can turn it over, and that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the placement of that. Now I'm gonna pull the backing off the other side. Make sure everything is laying nice and flat. I'm gonna pull my zipper back just to the point That it's at the edge of fabric and I'm going to press this side down. So I'm going to be very very careful when I'm sewing this to stay close to this so I'm not hitting that metal piece. I probably should have taken it that way a little bit more. You know what? Nope, we're good. I'll just be extra careful. That's within the, okay, we're good. That's a don't do what I do sort of situation right there. All right, so I don't think I need my zipper foot for this. I do not, I am gonna unzip it. Starting at a corner. I'm using an increased stitch length since this is pretty much top stitching. That is just going to avoid that metal piece. I'm actually going to go ahead and hand crank this part just because. There we go. That's good. So that has our zipper attached. So I am on the back side. You know what? I'm going to leave that. I am sorry about the background noise. I'm not sure what my neighbor's hammering on out there in the snow. Okay, so that's trimmed down there. Then I'm going to take the other panel piece 
and I like to line up the bottom edge first. Now I made sure that when I ironed these that I lined it up and ironed them at the same time. Not exactly the same time. I ironed one and then laid the other on the top. So if I line the bottom up here, then all of the other sides should line up. The bottom is gonna be open. So I'm gonna sew up this side, across the top, and down the other side. And the pocket is done, at least until we're done with the bag. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over, reduce my stitch length back down. I'm gonna flip this up. And again, using a 3 8 inch seam allowance because that's what the pattern calls for. I'm not going to bother with a seam guide this time. So now, lifting this up and turning. Making sure that bottom lines up is just going to help with sewing the pocket closed at the end. Okay, so there's our lining zipper pocket. Oh, I can move that clip too. Which opens and closes nicely. So that piece is done. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and take care of a couple of other small things that needs to be done before we get ready to put the bag together. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and add my zipper tab to the, I'm calling it the opened end because this is the end that it will be on when the zipper is opened all the way. So I'm going to We'll lay that on top of there. And I'm just going on the edge of the presser foot and I'm gonna stitch straight across. I'm gonna fold that up. I'm going to trim it so that there's only one inch from the seam to the end. And I'm estimating. It's okay to do that sometimes. So I'm going to fold this around to the back. And then I'm going to top stitch and that's going to secure it, the back of it. We'll have a nice half inch. zipper tab. There we go. That zipper tab is all set. So we need to add that out of the way. It doesn't get a zipper tab on both ends. So now I'm going to do this bit here, which is our strap connector pieces. I'm just running a piece of double-sided tape down the bit of Decaville that is on there. Okay, so I've extended my stitch length. And now I'm going to top stitch these. Helps if I actually get it in the fabric, doesn't it? We have 
D-ring connectors. And so I think I mentioned before, I'm using a three quarter inch D-ring instead of the half inch that the pattern calls for. Simply because the half inch ones that I have are super tiny. They're like, it's a different gauge metal that's used. And I would prefer to have something a little, a little more substantial. There we go. Work with that. And there are our strap connectors and our zipper tab all attached. So now we're going to move on to the construction of the body of the bag. So now the thing that we need to do is attach our foam to our exterior panels. So I use headliner foam and I don't cut it out per the pattern. I just cut a chunk. And what I'm going to do is lay this right on the foam and just baste it on. So we're going to go over to the machine and take care of that now. Okay, so I'm going to start with my back panel. Doesn't matter where you start, you're just basting it on. One thing I want to try to do is make sure that I'm smoothing everything out and keeping it straight. It's not going to slip and slide on this foam because this is, it's, it's almost like, like grippy. So now we're going to baste this in place. And I'm just going right on the edge. You could even do it at a quarter of an inch. It's not going to matter because the seams on the bag are 3 8 inch. Okay, that has both of the exterior pieces attached to their respective foam. Now I'll go over and trim this off and we'll be ready to start back construction. Okay, so all of my pieces are ready for assembly. I have my foam attached to my exterior pieces. My lining pieces are ready to go. So let's do this. I'm going to start with my front pieces. So I'm going to move my back pieces out of the way. So I need my zipper and my exterior piece. So I'm going to flip this over and about 5 eighths inch from the edge is where I'm going to clip. And at this point, I'm not even sure if I'm following the pattern. This is just the way I do it. I don't usually baste, but for this, I will. So this is where this part gets fun. So about the same distance, about 5 eighths inch from the end. I'm going to fold my zipper up like so. And put a clip in it. I'm going to go over and baste this in place at the machine and I'll be back, right back. So this is where this is going to be attached. And I put it this far over because that half inch zipper tab is going to nestle right in next to it. You know what? I'm going to move it over just a little bit more. So that is an inch and an eighth approximately. There we go. 
an inch and an eighth and five inch past. Five eighths inch, jeez. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So that is where my tabs are gonna be for the handles or the strap to connect to the bag. Okay. So now I'm going to bring this piece over and lay these right sides together. And I know that I need to nestle that zipper tab right up next to that. And we're going to make sure that that is five eighths and it is. And we're going to put a clip. Okay. So the only area that I think anyone would possibly have any issue with this pattern is here where the connectors are. You can have the option in the pattern to put the connector on the side, but I prefer it in the top. I like the way it looks. Um, or you could even sew a connector to the side if you wanted to. Um, it is a little thick right there, and that's one of the reasons that I didn't double up the thickness of the vinyl. But I think a domestic machine should be able to handle this if you've got a good sharp needle, the right thread, and the right stitch length. You may have to hand crank, but it should do. It should be doable. So this is where my fun starts, is I have to... And I think what I'm going to do is do that when I get there. I'll fold that up and sew as I come to it with the needle. I think I did that on one of the other bags that I made. I found it to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to baste this on. And you're probably going to see my sheet machine not want to go through some layers because I didn't change my needle because I was lazy. I think I can just Now we're going to attach our lining piece. So we're going to put this right sides together. And sew it at 5 8 inch seam allowance. So now we're ready to top stitch this side. So again, I'm pushing this back. I am gonna close my zipper up because that's gonna make things a little bit easier. So now I'm gonna push that back as much as I can and flip that out. And I'm pushing it all toward the exterior panel. Now it's time to top stitch. I think that's pretty good. So now when I top stitch, I'm going to push this up so that it's out, out of the way and out of the top stitching on the front because I don't want this to get top stitched down. Okay, so again, starting here at the tab. Zip that out of the way so this kind of lays a little more flat. Make sure that my lining's pulled back. I don't want that sticking out the front. There we go. And I do a little extra step. I it's not, I don't recall it being called for in the pattern. But I like to flip the exterior up right here. And I'm gonna top stitch these tabs to the lining. So these stitches will be visible on the inside of the bag, but I don't mind so much. 
I'm just sewing back and forth over that a few times. And I'm going to do the same thing on this end. There we go. Our bag is starting to come together. I'm liking how it's looking. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take this over to the countertop and start clipping things together so that we can finish up this bag. So I'll see you over there. Okay, so now we've got all of the pieces of the bag attached. The next thing we want to do is attach all of those pieces together in a way that resembles a bag. So I'm going to start clipping things together at the side seams just so that everything lines up really nicely. So we're going to push the seam allowance toward the exterior and line that up and put a clip on it. And then I'm going to do the other side as well. I'm pushing the seam allowance toward the exterior of the bag. Lining everything up. And we're going to put a clip in it. It's a little bit of thickness right there, but it'll do it. Okay. So now I'm going to go down the sides of the exterior of the bag and put a few clips. That's upside down. Just lining everything up. And I like to make sure that these bits here, the vinyl on the side, are lined up. See, that one is lined up. I know the, where they meet is on the bottom of the bag, but I'll know it's there. There we go. So now we're going to clip the lining part. And instead of sewing all the way around the lining and, sew and turning the bag through the pocket, I'm actually going to turn the bag through the lining, pull the lining out through the pocket, stitch the lining closed, and then stitch the pocket closed. And that's why I folded back the bottom edges of the pocket. So when I stitch it closed, it's nice and even, and I can sew right on the edge, and it'll be good to go. I try to leave the red ones for the bottom here when I put this together. So I put a red clip where I start and where I stop my stitches. I'm a weirdo, I know. It just helps me remember. Put one more clip over here and then we're going to go back over to the machine and sew this bad boy together. Okay, so we have everything clipped together and we're ready to turn this into a bag. The pattern says to sew the lining at 5 8 inch seam allowance and the exterior of the bag at 3 8 inch. Um, the ones I made before, I did a half an inch for the lining and 3 8 for the exterior, and that seemed to work pretty well. The lining isn't like really baggy or anything, but I'm going to give the 5 8 inch a go for this one and see how that works out. So I've got my seam guide in place. I'm going to move that out of the way. Reduce my stitch length. So this is where things can start getting a little tricky. But I just kind of I'm going to go ahead and move that clip out of the way, and that's going to help me a little bit. And I'm going all the way up to where the lining meets. I'm going to backstitch. I'm going to lift my presser foot, move my seam guide to the 3 8 inch seam allowance. Drop my needle back down. I'm going to pop my little hump jumper in there. It's not an actual hump jumper. I made it myself. I'm 
And then we're gonna go ahead and go the rest of the way around. So I'll speed this part up so it doesn't take quite as long. move those out of the way go ahead and clip my threads real quick I go into the interior here and find the end of my zipper and I'll work it over with my foot that's what I foot my foot <laughs> work it over with my finger um, that's what I like about the turned under zipper ends rather than a tab with a tab it would have been harder to do that all right so I'm in here and now I want to pinch these and sew my corners. Now I am trying to press open the seam allowance. There's not a lot there and it can be a little difficult, but we make it work. And don't be afraid to mush it. You're not gonna hurt that bag. So that is the exterior corners done. So now we do the same thing with the lining. Guess what? It's time to birth a bag. Okay, so this is where we're at. I'm actually gonna trim down just the corner seams. I'm not worried about the side seams so much. So now we're gonna very carefully turn this bag inside out from here through this little hole. If I get off screen, I'm sorry. Sometimes I need a little bit of leverage. What I'm doing is I'm rolling the lining of the bag to be around the body as if it's inside out. And from that point, it makes it a lot easier to take the bag up now and get my hand down in there and really push those corners out. There we go. There's one side and the other. One of these days I'm going to break a nail doing that <laughs> and then I will not be a happy camper. So I've got my thumb in here and I'm just pushing out. corner. There's a couple of different tools that I could use to get in there. Oh, there we go. That's not too bad right there. And then this side. And I could go back and put this under the machine and top stitch from there to there just to kind of hold that flat, but it isn't super necessary. 
So now we can kind of audition the bag to see how it's going to look. Actually, that 5 8 inch seam allowance isn't, that's not too shabby in there. I'm certainly not complaining. That zipper could have been a little bit closer to the end there. So I need to put rivets here. And this whole thing will get steamed and lint rollered. But so far, not too bad. That Enderman does not look happy with his place on this bag. And there's the back of the bag. So I'm gonna open up this zipper on the inside and you can see all the way to the lining of the bag. So I'm gonna grab the lining and pull it out through the pocket. I'm gonna take this over to the machine and we're gonna sew this shut and we're gonna sew the pocket shut. So I'll meet you over there. Okay, so we're back over at the machine and we're just gonna sew this closed right across that gap that I turned the bag through. I am going to trim across there just to reduce a little bit of the bulk in the bottom of the bag. Not that there should be too much. So now from here, I'm going to tuck that lining back in through the pocket. Smooth out the inside of the bag. And then I'm going to just pull the pocket out. Like so. So now you have these nice clean edges that are going to match up when I stitch this close. But the first thing I like to do is to snip these corners. It just helps get a nice clean corner in the pocket. And this is just the seam allowance. I'm cutting it at an angle. And then I'm just gonna pinch this and stitch right from corner to corner, right at the edge of the bag, or the edge of the pocket. So I'm going to try to make sure that this is hooked in as much as possible. And I'm sewing literally right on the edge of the fabric. I'm making sure that the edges are lined up nicely. And that's the whole reason that I, let me do this. That's a little better. So I'm making sure that the edges are lined up nicely along this edge. And then I'm just going to stitch right down the edge. Sorry about that. I had to change the camera angle. It was, uh, the bag was hitting the tripod and it did not, uh, it wasn't happy. Guys, guess what? This bag is done. So I'm going to take this over to the table and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we've just sewn the pocket closed. I'm just going to hit that with a lint roller. So now we can tuck this pocket lining back down into the pocket both hands in there to try to push those corners down so that it's nice and neat. I'm going to zip that up. And here's the inside of the bag. So that's nice and neat. Okay, so now it's time for our rivets. 
So I'm going to use an anvil set. If my magnetic bowl will let it go. <laughs> okay. And my hammer. So I'm eyeballing center of this, which is going to be right about there. Make sure that isn't in the way. I'm so sorry for the noise. So there's that one. And there we go. I have my strap all done. So there's our Enderman bag all finished. If I can prop that up there. There we go. Thank you so much guys for hanging out with me while I made this bag. Um, I'll have this listed in the shop soon and I actually have a second one that I will most likely be doing live on stream. This one has a few more characters on it, not just Enderman. So you can catch that over at twitch.tv slash ladycrafts and I'll put the link somewhere up there. Or should I say somewhere up there? I don't know. Anyway, um, I'll also have the link in the description for that. There's also a link to my website that has my blog, my shop, all those types of things. And there are a few affiliate links of tools and things that I use. So hopefully you guys can give me some feedback in the poll up there about how you like the length of your walkthrough style, tutorial style videos to be. Would you rather have it broken down into smaller sections or in longer videos like this one? Also, if you aren't a new sewer and you just want a quick run through, then you can check out the other card for the video that I posted last week. That's a time lapse of me making the same bag pattern. So I will see you all guys next time. Hopefully I'll have a short video up next Friday. The goal is to post every single week. Fingers crossed that I can keep up with that. Have a great day guys and thank you so much for spending a bit of it with me. Bye. There goes that bobbin thread. It looks like a mouth. Hello. Meanwhile, I made this bag. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for hanging out with me. <laughs> oh, man.